Hey, welcome back. So I have a brand new video for you today. Today I like to share my street photography setting. The first part of the video will be how my camera is set up and the second part will be my settings that I use for manual mode and aperture priority mode. I have timestamped everything down below so you can just skip ahead if you like to. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's get into the camera setup. I have the Sony a7C and uh, most of the settings that I will be talking about today can be applied to other brands. They might be called something else, so just be mindful of that. I've customized my camera a lot over the years by trial and error and found what works best for me. So to keep it simple today, I will only talk about the most common settings to set up your camera as well, or maybe just be inspired by. I want to preserve as much information and detail in my photos, so that's why I shoot in RAW and it's uncompressed. The files might be a little bit larger than normal, but that's okay, it's a trade-off that I'm willing to take. And also, I like the flexibility it gives me in post-production because I do edit my photos a lot. The aspect ratio is set to 3x2 and because my camera is full frame, I like to utilize the entire sensor for still images. Alright, so let's talk about the back button focus. I've had this set up for many years and it works really well for me and the type of street photography that I do. Basically, the back button focus is a technique where you separate the autofocus from the release shutter button and reassign it to a button in the back of the camera. With the back button focus, I get best of both worlds, which means that I can quickly change my settings if there's sudden movement in the shot that I'm trying to take and uh, be able to track that. So that works really well for me and the type of street photography that I do. So the next function I've set up is the Super 35 that is offered by the Sony a7C. So basically I set up my lenses where there's a button on it so I can quickly tap it and it will crop in 1.5 times giving me a tighter focal length. So for example if I'm shooting with a 55mm it will become an 82mm a tighter focal length just by pressing a button. This is especially handy if you only have one lens with you out on the streets which I often do because I only have prime lenses and just by pressing a button you can have that extra focal length with you. So the next couple of settings are I have steady shot on my camera because uh, it's a feature that is nice and handy to have especially if you have shaky hands which I do and I have turned on the grid lines on my camera as well so I can uh, compose my photos the right way. I used to use this a lot when I was a beginner photographer and less now but it's still nice to have them on. I also have the leveling feature turned on and I use it a lot because I often have a crooked horizon and I want to make sure that it's level in camera. I can of course correct it in post but it's better to have it correctly set. The next setting is that I have silent mode on always for street photography. This is really nice because I can be discreet so this is not a setting but this is more from a practical perspective. I don't use the EVF of the Sony a7C because it's really really bad. The eye cup is very minimal and it's very uncomfortable to put your eye close to it. I do have an external eye cup that I bought but I never use it and also I've gotten used to using the LCD and when I switched from my Canon 800D to the Sony a7C that was a big change for me to not use the EVF and only use the LCD but now it's uh, all I use and uh, I think it's wonderful. Let's talk about the custom button layout and the settings that I use most uh, when I'm out doing street photography. So I have my drive mode set to autofocus continuous and uh, I use that because most of my photos they have a lot of movement in them so I just want to make sure that I can track that and also capture that because sometimes a scene can be very very flat and there's no movement at all and suddenly there's a lot of movement so I just want to make sure that I can uh, capture that and also that is combined with my uh, back button focus uh, setup. So the next setting is burst mode. I've set it to mid to high and then it really depends on what type of street photography I'm doing. And as I mentioned before, I like to have a lot of movement in my photos. So uh, normally I put it in mid, which is normally when I'm out and about doing street photography. In my latest POV, you can see that I've set my burst mode to high because I was doing a very specific type of street photography where I knew there will be a lot of movement. So I set it to high. You can also go up to high plus. It just means that it will take a lot of frames. So for example, eight to 10 or 11, how much your camera can do. I have the focus area set to tracking and large. I think you can choose between small, medium and large. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, specifically a Sony feature, but as I mentioned before, there's a lot of movement in my shots and uh, often I have a person or subject that I want to track and the camera does a really good job of uh, tracking that. The metering mode that I most commonly use is the center weighted one or the multi and uh, this really depends on what type of street photography I do 
and uh, basically the metering mode will ensure that your photo is properly exposed. Uh, there is a feature in the Sony Alpha cameras that is called highlight and if you're doing high contrast photos uh, you can put it on that as well but I actually just use center weighted so try to play around with your settings and figure out what you like best. I have the zebra level set up and activated so it's set to 109 plus uh, and it's very sensitive so I can see when the photo is clipped or blown out and that is really handy when you're out on the streets. The white balance is most often set to auto and that is because the cameras nowadays are so advanced so they are most often correct but sometimes I do dial it in manually and often I do that for night street photography. I dial in the settings of 3200 to 3400 Kelvin and sometimes I also put it in, in dedicated sunny mode if it's sunny and bright outside. For manual mode my settings are ISO is always set to the lowest that I can get away with and often I don't go over 1600 but that really depends on the type of street photography I'm doing and also the time of day. Aperture is set to between 2.8 to 5.6 and uh, that is because I really like the nice depth of field that it gives me and normally I hover uh, around 2.8. And my shutter speed is most often set between 1 over 25 to 1 over 200 and that is because I want to capture any movement that is uh, coming into my scene. And if you want to capture any movement that is faster than that, you can go to 1 over 500, then you will be sure to capture that movement. My settings for aperture priority mode are more or less the same as manual mode. So let's start with the aperture and again it's set between 2.8 and 5.6 and depending on the type of street photography I'm doing and how sharp I want my photos to be. And the shutter speed is decided by the camera and uh, the ISO is set to auto. In most cameras you can set up the ISO settings in ranges and uh, I have set up my camera so the range between 100 and 3200 ISO for day street photography and for night it's 100 uh, up till 12400 for night street photography and the minimum shutter speed should uh, as a rule of thumb be 1 over focal length and what that means is if I'm using a lens that has 55 millimeter, the minimum shutter speed to 1 over 55 or 1 over 50 and that way I won't introduce motion blur that is unwanted. I use the exposure compensation dial a lot when I'm shooting in aperture priority mode and often I tend to underexpose my photos and sometimes with a full stop but normally it's 0.3 or 0.6 underexposed and the reason I do that is that I want to preserve my highlights and my shadows. I don't want anything to be blown out or clipped and I can always bring it back in post in, in Lightroom. So these are my street settings and how I set up my camera. It's all about trial and error and I tried many times to change my settings and now I found what works best for me. So go out there and try your settings for yourself. Take care, see you in the next one.